Hey and welcome. So in this video we're going to have a look at Microsoft Flight Simulator but with the Tomcat F14 which is by Heat Blur. Um, they've now brought the DCS plane over to Microsoft Flight Simulator and I've just had a chance to have a look at it. One thing I just want to mention out of the box, one thing I had to set up at least um, was going to your joystick, just type in here search by name and just type in set nose. So S-E-T-N-O-S-E and make sure you have something set to set nose wheel steering to limit. Make sure you know what you've set to that button, okay? Set nose wheel steering to limit. That's the only thing I found I had to set up. Um, and then then you're good to go with um, this plane. So other thing I'll just mention, normally as I understand you have to start the right engine and it's quite easy in DCS because you can just right click and it starts the right engine. This one you can only left click it so it goes to left engine first every time. So all I suggest is before you do anything, just click twice until it goes on to like this right engine. Um, it just goes into center, to left, to right. Okay, so just make sure it's set to right and then you're good. Once that's done, you're gonna go up into the gesture menu. So to get the gesture menu, you're clicking in this big box here. So this is what the cockpit looks like. You're clicking in this area here, somewhere there. Click, left click once brings up this menu and if you're from DCS you'll be familiar with this but it's all going to be looking different. Um, in this game you go up to here number 8 aircraft servicing and then on the very top it says toggle external electrical power. Now in DCS you would normally do external power plus air but in this game it seems all you need to do is external power. To get out of the menu click on the pilot in the middle so one click and then one click again and he's gone. Need to bring it back just left click. Cool. Um, other things you need to set up, AFCS, 1, 2, and 3. Just down here, you want to go and click on this button here for oxygen, click that once. And all the way back up here, you want to just click on this little switch at the top. Just see this little red switch up here? You want to left click that once, and that will set your ejection seat up. So that's all of that done. Just down here, we're going to click three times. So once on here for power, HUD, and HSD. Um, the only thing I wanted to mention, this is all for lighting, so it's not critical to click, but in DCS, if you're clicking it, once you click once, it'll like switch from one to two to three to four. This one seems to be like you have to click it more times, so like one, two, three, four. Do you know what I mean? It's really slow. So if I want to get to four, I've got to go one, two, one, two to five, one, two to six. It just seems really slow. That's all compared to DCS, but functionally, it's the same. Um, there's no big problem there. Just something I noticed that was a little bit different. Um, but yeah, it's all lighting, so none of that's too critical. If you're wondering where your hook is, this is your hook. And if you're wondering where your gear is, this is your gear lever, this one here. And then, of course, you've got your parking brake. But before we get blasted by sounds outside, over here is a canopy. So you click that once, and that will close the canopy. So that's all good. And then when you go back over to here, you can switch it to left. So now it will start the left engine. And to look at what's going on, you're looking at these dials here. So that's the right engine, and then this one is the left engine. We're just waiting for it to get up to sort of seven, and then that will be started. Um, the nose wheel steering button, if you're wondering if you've got it on or not, you're looking up here in WS and gauge. So if I click it once, that button I was talking about before, it's gone, and then obviously you click it again and it comes up. But to know if you've got it on or not, you're just looking up here and it will say NWS engage. That means it's on. When it's not there and it's lit up, it's not on. And you won't be able to steer left and right very easily on the ground. Um, but that's pretty much it. You've, you've pretty much got to start a plane at this point. So all you'd need to do is click once, take off your parking brake, and then um, you'll be able to start moving. So I've taken the handbrake or the parking brake off in this plane. Uh, we are on the ground, so I'll just change it to field and uh, that's that's pretty much it. You can run into trouble if this was on Neil. Your nose will stream won't work if it's on Neil. It will have to be on extended or off. Um, that's the only other thing I think I can mention. Um, you've got your radar altimeter and then your normal altimeter. Um, you've got your speedo up here. That's your speed. That's your altitude, okay? That's the main two things which you're wanting to know. These are your engines. And if you need to turn your engines off, there is uh, like a screw. And you can click this and that will kind of turn it off. Um, this is for your other stuff. So your radios and then your TACAN. Um, but 
we're not going to need that in this flight whatsoever. So we'll just give ourselves a little bit of throttle, see if we can move. And yep, we are. So that's nice. The only other thing is I might just drag this out. So if you drag this out, the yellow lever, um, just a little bit, what that will do is it will sort of bring your wings out. So if you look outside, you can see the wings are out, extending. And then you're good to, um, to be able to take off like that. So anyway, we'll just try and see if we can find a runway somewhere. And then we'll take off. Try and do a small flight wrap. Brisbane International Airport. I don't know if this game comes with like an aircraft carrier um, because I don't have any aircraft carriers that I'm aware of so if, if there is one cool but I haven't looked and I'm not for me because I've got DCS I'm not really bothered about the aircraft carrier side of it like I'll use DCS if I want to do that I'm happy to just take off from a you know normal airport like this but you can do that apparently in this plane. We'll just see if we can get in the air at all. I think there's a runway over that way we can use. So we'll head over that way. What would be interesting is, um, I don't know if it needs a full runway. So if we do actually not use a full runway, that could be interesting. You can click all these buttons like gun rate and stuff, but sidewinder calling, but there's no weapons, yeah, so there's not no point. But I'm glad you can still click the buttons, that, you know, just for fun, you can click it. But that's all you can do with that. You can hit a loadout, in, like in DCS, you would have to wait to put your fuel tanks on and so forth, but this game, just click it, get out, and then have a look at your plane. And it's, it's just installed instantly. So you've got the two fuel tanks on. Um, yeah, there's no need to, to wait or have your engine off or anything like that. Um, I think I know what my brake is at the moment, so hopefully that was going to work for me. If I look down here, you can see, um, so like I go left, I go right, you can see the pedals moving. And then if I hit brake, you should be able to see, see how to go down straight. And then the plane is actually physically stopped as well. I let go, so I hold down the brake brakes are on, let go of the brakes, you can see them lift up, so, you know, that's cool. Um, in DCS, you could hide the joystick, but I don't, I haven't seen it, or look, you can even hide the joystick, yeah, so that's cool. To do that, I'm just clicking here, in this little area, and it's hiding the joystick, so yeah, you can even do that, um, and you can actually switch the button up and down, that's pretty interesting, but of course, again, there's none of this is modelled working in the game, so that's not, not too too important. But I'm glad we can still hit the switch. It gets you familiar with where things are. Um, and that's what's good. And of course there is a whole cockpit behind me as well. Which is very cool. Um, I just want to turn right here. So I know it looks a bit tight but we'll just turn right anyway. It looks great, like, it looks really good. The external modeling, it's great. The only thing missing is the flight modeling. Like, if you're gonna use a PMDG 747 or something like that, I think the flight model in this game is a little bit better suited to that than a small fighter like the F-14. But as a stepping stone, if you are only got Microsoft Flight Simulator curious about DCS and just wanna experience what it's like, grab this plane and it will give you a bit of an idea and then if you want to come over to DCS then go buy the F-14, there's no harm in doing that and you'll have a little bit of a familiarity. Um, it's one of the best modules in the game so yeah and then you'll really be able to get to experience what the flight modeling is like, you'll get to experience what it's like to use weapons and gauge weapons and and a lot of that sort of stuff. Um, you can do a bit of formation flying in Microsoft Flight Simulator but nothing like what you can do in DCS. 
like with air to air refueling and stuff like that. I believe if you hit the probe in this game, it just automatically air refuels. That's it. So there's no need to actually get into the basket. But um, yeah. Just see if I can get it out. See the probe comes out. So the two things to be aware of: your speed and also your altitude. And of course, you'd never normally be bringing the probe out. I'm just doing it for fun. So we've got 150, so we'll just pull back gently on that stick and we'll see if we can get ourselves into the sky. Here we go. We'll push G on the keyboard, bring the gear in. There's Brisbane International Airport there. Very, very cool. If you're just gentle with the joystick as you fly, you probably have less problems with the flight modeling in this game, but if you're trying to do like really hard turns and stuff, you'll start running into trouble. They have simulated the blackout, and they've also simulated like um, where you can break the wings if you if you're turning at too fast a speed. So yeah, there is that. So if you're just first getting this plane, just be gentle with your joystick, like your movements, and you won't run into too much trouble um, because obviously blacking out it's not much cool your screen just goes black and you can't fly anymore so yeah it's very avoidable it is a little bit like that in DCS as well so it's not like they're simulating something you don't need to get used to you do need to get a little bit used to that but yeah if you want to jump in a plane like this and experience this module in a Microsoft flight simulator with a lovely backdrop of Brisbane International Airport that's just something you can't do in DCS so there's absolutely a point to bringing this module over to this game. Look at that. They've got the story bridge down there. You've got Brisbane, the city. We're in horrifying weather at the moment, but yeah, this is just something you can't experience in DCS. So it's fantastic that they have brought this over. I really think this is a great stepping stone. For people who have never tried DCS, grab this, have a look at this module, and then if it interests you, go over to DCS with this module, because it would be fine to start with this module in DCS. I mean, there's no problem doing that, and um, you'll have some familiarity. But doesn't that look great? They've got Brisbane. We've got really bad weather, of course, right at the moment. I think you can change it on the fly. I don't know if it's going to let me. Depending on what settings I've gone and done. Live weather. So if I turn live weather off, here we go. We've got a little bit better weather now. You see that little bit of smoke off the wings there as I released it? Very, very cool. Not as... um noticeable as it was on DCS, but still. See that? Just a little bit. Very cool. Alright, we'll just jump into the cockpit so things look a little bit more normal. I just want to have a look at my speed as well. Might bring that down a little bit. And then we should be able to find the airport a little bit more easy now. So there's Story Bridge over there. Yeah, a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Um, because of the familiarity I have with this plane just from DCS, um, it's just uh, an amazing experience to be able to see this in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Of course, there is no weapons, so there is absolutely a point to DCS. There is all the city, a few of the buildings, we're quite low here. And that's the blackout, if you're wondering what I'm talking about, that's what I'm talking about with the blackout. You can see you can see it just goes black and you won't know what you're doing. So I'm just turning too hard there. So we'll just level off. Of course we don't want to break the wings because um, 
once I've blacked out, I'll just, you know, I've been very easy on the controls. It's looking pretty good. So there's the airport out there, Brisbane International, Brisbane, and then the port's over that way. Yeah, it's just great. And it's quite easy to start up, as you can see. You don't need to spend $500 on a joystick for Microsoft Flight Simulator. You can just use a Logitech Extreme 3D Pro and get by with that. Um, I do have a Warthog, but I just wanted to sort of see what it would be like for people who didn't have something like that, Thrustmaster. And of course I have this joystick, so... So, I don't know if I'm going to be able to slow this plane down in time, but let's have a little look. So we've got something called air brakes. So if you look at the back of the plane, there are these air brakes which come out. So you can bring out your air brakes and then you can bring down your gear. So we'll do that and we'll have a little look. You can see the gears coming down. So we've got the gear down. And now we've just got to give ourselves a bit of throttle because we've got a little bit more distance to go before we reach the runway. Pretty cool. A very big bridge over there. I think we can change it to like landing. But yeah. Oh, it's on that. There we go. We turn it off. And we'll come in to land. We haven't got nose wheel steering on at the moment, so... Just wanted to give you a bit of an external view there, but yeah. We're down on the ground. And then we can brake if we want. And then we'll rapidly come to a stop. I'll just release the brake. But yeah, we're safely on the ground. Can bring up those um, air brakes. There we go. What a cool module. I'll see if we can just taxi it off the uh, runway. We'll see if we can. The parking brake is off. And we've got the nose wheel steering light on up here. That's what I'm looking at. I'll just jump to external view so I can work out where I'm going. We can bring those uh, wings in. Ah, here we go. Just trying to bring the wings in. But you can see how they're sweeping in. There we go. Cool. So yeah, that is it is possible to do that in this game. 
then of course we can steer again. For whatever reason, for a moment there, it wouldn't let me steer, which is why I'm on the grass. Like it was just doing it really slow. I did have the light on, but it wasn't steering. But we can steer again now that those wings are in. And then we're going to see if we can actually do a shutdown. Like, you know, shut the engine off like I was mentioning. And a bit of a shutdown. We'll see if we can do that. Of course, you'd not normally be landing an F-14 at an airport like this. But, um... That's the cool thing about the simulator. So we're just going to head over towards this one over here. How cool does that look though? In my F-14 just casually coming in to land. No problem at all. You want to get rid of your fuel tanks, you can do that on the fly, I think. Aircraft loadout, clean configuration. And if we look, see, they're gone now. Pretty interesting. You keep bringing it up, but yeah, you get the idea. You can see the little wheel down the front here, like it's turning as I I turn left and then right, and then of course you've got the rudder flaps at the back turning. Park at the A330 parking or something, shall we? Just a bit of an excuse to look at it plain from the exterior at the moment. There we go, we're stopped. And so we'll jump into the plane and we will apply our parking brake by pulling this lever. So now the plane can't go anywhere. And we're going to turn off these three here. So one, two, and three. I'm just going to turn those three off. I'm going to go down to here, just turn off that. Uh, ejection seat, because I definitely don't want to eject at the moment. Um, is this little switch? So we've clicked that to go up. And then we can turn off our displays over here. So we're going to turn off one, two, and three. And then we might turn the engine off before the canopy, I'm not sure. Um, let's get the canopy up. I'm going to click on this, get the canopy open. And then we're going to try and get this engine off if we're, if we're able. We're going to go down to here. And I clicked on that spot there. And that seems to have shut down the engine. And then you've basically got a full shutdown in the F-14 Tomcat. That's the experience. Um, not bad. If I click in here in the middle and then click on aircraft servicing and then click external power connected, I'm just going to click that to disconnect external power. You could have done that before you took off, but anyway, that's what's going on here. Click it again, click it again, and um, we are definitely on the ground and ready to go for our next flight. Cool. Thank you for watching. This was the F-14 Tomcat in Microsoft Flight Simulator. What do I think? I think it's um, okay. The, the, the playing and the visuals are all great. The sounds are great. So all of that's been brought over. Um, the flight modeling is acceptable. And it's a great stepping stone. So if you're in Microsoft Flight Simulator, want to know what DCS playing is like, grab this. It'll give you a great start. Um, and one of the best modules that are in DCS. So it'll give you a really good idea what the cockpit's like. You can learn about where all the different functions are for different things and you can use it to fly around Brisbane or all the wonderful scenery in Microsoft Flight Simulator. And then if you want to start using weapons or you want to start using the back cockpit a little bit more, um, the back cockpit is in it. So like if I move back here, we'll just try and show you. It is in this plane as well. So you've got in DCS the ability to use, you know, to front and the back all at once. And, um, it's modeled. Look at it. It's all here. 
so it's amazing it gets you other switches working look at even the switches are clicking so yeah really really cool there's a whole bunch of functionality back here that you wouldn't really be able to use in this game but once you have weapons and stuff and then you know you, just, you can um do things like flares i don't know if even that's working it's probably not working in this game so yeah pretty cool but both the cockpits are simulated um it looks it looks the part and then you can find out what the flight modeling is like in dcs it is much better but it's acceptable enough in this game to be able to fly around and look at the scenery which is the main point you can fly from one destination to another go to one airport to another in this plane cool perfect and it's a really fast plane too this one let's not forget this this aircraft can go quite fast if you want it to so yeah um a lot of fun but look how good it looks like it's looking exactly like it does in dcs they've really brought it over into this game who can not like that really how could you not like that it just looks so good looks looks fantastic and all the switches are clickable look at this even the time is working that's just amazing yeah so that's a start up a shut down a bit of a flight in some rainy weather and some clear weather um there's all the lighting i do wonder whether it's worth looking at this plane at night time i'll just quickly change it to night time can we do that okay there we go so now we're in night time we've got the flashlight on straight away Okay, so we click up here, um, click aircraft servicing, external power connected. We're just going to do a quick startup. Because do you know why? This plane can look wonderful at night time, like the whole cockpit. We are next to a bit too much lighting outside, but that's alright. It can look really good. Flash, anti collision light on. The red lights are on. This is the real part that I'm wanting to show. So we'll just put that on dim, taxi lights are on, and then all of these are switched over to full right. Yep. And there's your red lights. Wow. It's not looking um as bright as what we're used to. I can't look at that, it's gone straight to right, that's good. And it's starting up. Yep, no problem there. One, two, three, and then one, two, three, and then you can click that. Oh, I didn't open the cop canopy, but that's okay. We'll go up to the top here, click on this, go down, and then we'll just quickly hit our air switch, and that's pretty much it. That's, that's our startup. We can get going again. We can bring the wings out, of course, but yeah. Just waiting for that engine. If we jump to external, see how one's a little bit bigger than the other? So all that's modelled. Not too bad. We're centered again and get rid of the joystick, maybe. There we go. Got a fuel down here. And put it to left engine. That's the right engine started. I don't know if we can do a pushback with this, but. Still got that handbrake on, of course. Parking brake. Might as well steering is engaged. Got that little taxi light on. 
So that's what it looks like at night time a little bit. We've done two startups. And then you, you would just have to taxi it around and take off basically. But yeah. If you could do a pushback, that would be ideal, but you just have to turn it around. So I take that off, plane starts turning, so I just turn it manually. Quite the turning circle, huh? If we get away from that lighting a little bit, we might be able to see how the red looks. Look at that red. Wow. Okay. And so you can turn it off completely and then look at that now. That looks cool, doesn't it? And see, look at the white lights on the left and the right. Okay, that looks very cool. So, yeah, just wanted to show you that. And you've got that lovely red glow. And then you can turn the red glow off if you want to. And just put on, you know, like a white light for down here and there. But yeah, no, that's all good. That's the taxi light outside that you can see. So no, notice there's nothing on its side now. And look at the glow from the wings on the ground. Very cool. Seem to got most of it working. We turn it on, and then you've got your taxi light here. So yeah, that's a um, look at that. And again, if you're going to shut it down, well, all we need to do, of course, is close your canopy um, or open your canopy once you've done with the whole engine. Uh, we just need to turn those three off. You can turn off these three. Also, your switch at the very back at the top. I don't think we can see it at this time of day, can we? Might be difficult. There we go. It's that there. We did find it. And then just the engine. So if we bring ourselves down, we can turn the oxygen thing off. And then um, just down here, click on that. What if we can turn it off again? Here's our mission now. So I've got both engines started. All of that's off. This won't matter. The ACLS stuff is off. So we might need the parking brake on. So now the parking brake is on. Can we do it now? We're able to do it the first time, so that's interesting. bringing those wings in. I mean, this is my experience with it, so. Yeah, so you bring the wings in, then click that button, and then it turns off, yeah. 
Um, so we've discovered that, and then of course you're pretty much going to have a shut down aircraft um, at that point in time. The power's off, and we we selected up here um, external power disconnected already. So yeah, now you just back the flashlight. And you'll just hear the engine sort of start ticking, and yeah, it's back to normal. Hear the engine as it's just slowly drifting away. How cool. I think you can't really do a review without looking at it at night time, can you? So we've done that in this video as well. And we've done two shutdowns. And we've done a bit of a takeoff and we've done a start up as well. So yeah, very, very cool. Impressive. Definitely something fun to fly in Microsoft Flight Simulator. And it's even better in DCS if the weapons and, you know, the ability to do formation flying and actually do air-to-air -air refueling. That's a big one. Definitely being able to experience air to air refueling with this plane is something else. So, yeah, the flight modeling in DCS is a lot better. But for flying around in Microsoft Flight Simulator and looking at cities like Brisbane, that's an experience you can't get currently in DCS Digital Combat Simulator. And for that, we have to bring this aircraft module all the way over into this is fantastic. Awesome. Yeah, great. Highly recommended. It's good. It's worthwhile and it's fun and it's a great stepping stone. Have a great day.